You know, I really believe that we're at a defining moment in American history. I feel like years from now, people will look back at this window of time and they will study it. And they'll want to know what went wrong with the American experiment in 2024. I have never seen an election like this in my life. I've never felt like this going into an election. I've never felt like democracy was on the line. I've never felt like it might be the last time that I ever voted, but this is how I feel now. And when people do look back and study this time period, I want them to be able to see that I was on the right side of history. That's one of the main reasons why that I continue to use my platform for this reason. It's one of the main reasons why I keep talking. I keep driving home the same talking points because I want people to know that I was one of them that didn't buy it. And I was one of them that wouldn't go quietly about it. Um, when I read history books about how dictators rose to power, I always used to say to myself, you know, how did, how did they get there and how many people was protesting? How many people was screaming against it? How many people was letting their voices be heard? Well, back then they didn't have a cell phone that they could just record a video on and throw it up on a platform like YouTube and, and let their voices be heard. So we may never know the answer to that. But when people look back at this experiment, they can say, yeah, there were people who were about pro-democracy. There were people who didn't buy in to the bullshit that Donald Trump was selling them. And there were people who was willing to lose everything, their life's work, if it means so, in order to stand up and speak out. And when I stumbled across this clip of Ken Burns, I said, I gotta share this with everybody. This is about the best 90 seconds you're gonna hear on this subject. Which brings me to a moment I've dreaded and forces me to suspend my longstanding attempt at neutrality. There is no real choice this November. There is only the perpetuation, however flawed and feeble you might perceive it, of our fragile 249-year-old experiment or the entropy that will engulf and destroy us if we take the other route. When, as Mercy Otis Warren would say, the checks of conscience are thrown aside and a deformed picture of the soul is revealed. The presumptive Republican nominee is the opioid of all opioids, an easy cure for what some believe is the solution to our myriad pains and problems, when in fact, with him, you end up re-enslaved with an even bigger problem, a worse affliction and addiction, a bigger delusion, James Baldwin would say, the author and finisher of our national existence, our national suicide, as Mr. Lincoln prophesies. Do not be seduced by easy equalization. There is nothing equal about this equation. We are at an existential crossroads in our political and civic lives. This is a choice that could not be clearer. Again, I do believe that's about the best 90 seconds you're going to see on this subject, and I really don't know how I can follow it, but I'm going to try. He's right. We can't stay neutral. Now is not the time to be neutral. Now is not the time to be sitting on the fence. Now is not the time to be sitting one out in hopes that it'll get better later. No, right now more than ever is the time to speak up, speak out, and vote, and encourage other people to vote, and encourage them to vote on the side of democracy. And the man that's standing on the side of democracy in 2024 is Joe Biden. That's the choice, and it's loud and clear. And I have a whole lot of people, friends included, who I love and respect, that reaches out to me all the time and says, you should call out Joe Biden. I'm mad at him over this, or I'm mad at him over that. I get it. You have every right to be mad at Joe Biden about whatever you want to. You're free to do so. You don't have to agree with him on everything. You can call him out. You can call him down. You can do whatever you want to. I'm never going to say that you have to follow the leader because we're not in a cult. But what I am going to point out to you is that if you're mad at Joe Biden, over supporting Israel, and you're one of, one of these people that say, well, he's funding genocide, okay. Every American president has supported Israel, and they're always going to. That's just the truth. Donald Trump supported Israel, he's gonna do it again. And he's also gonna stack the Supreme Court even further to the right this time. I remember back in 2016, we were having the same conversation, and there was a whole lot of the Bernie bros that were really pissed off and saying to me, I'm staying home. I'm not voting for this, or I'm voting for Jill Stein, I'm voting third party. And I said to him, if you do this, the next president can appoint Supreme Court justices. Hillary Clinton won't stack it to the right, Donald Trump will. Well, that's fine, let him burn them down. That'll teach, that'll teach the Democrats a lesson. No, what it did was it got rights stripped away from women. We saw Roe versus Wade get overturned. We saw affirmative action done away with. That's what we've seen. We have saw rights be stripped away from people. 
because Donald Trump stacked the Supreme Court to the right. And if he gets in again, he's going to stack it even further in that direction. So you can be mad at Joe Biden about something that's going on in another country and him supporting or whatever. You, you can be mad about that all day long. But right here in the country you live in, you're going to see more and more rights stripped away and you're still going to have a guy who funds and supports Israel. So that's why that I don't really make a lot of content calling out Joe Biden on that one because it's just the facts. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm not trying to say that you don't have a relevant point. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm just simply pointing out, folks, that that's the way things are. I, it took me years to figure that out. Back when I was younger, okay, we'll go all the way back to the first time I voted in a presidential election. Guess which one I voted in for the first time? I voted for Al Gore. Guess what? It didn't go my way. Guess what? I was 20 years old and I was mad at the world. I was like, oh, they stole it from Al Gore. It's a conspiracy. It's bullshit. And I shouted it down and I, I shouted it down for a while. It, it took me a while to get over that one. But eventually I had to put my big boy pants on and realize, you know, that's just the way the world is. That's just the way things are, and there ain't nothing I can do about it. The only thing I can do is keep speaking up, speaking out, and talking about it, and voting. I can do that, but this is the system that we have. So for the people out there that says to me, well, I wish we had a third party. I wish we had more options. I wish that, you know, the sky was purple, and I wish the grass was neon pink. Well, there's a lot of things I wish for, too, and I'm not trying to be a smartass here. I'm just trying to show you what's on the line. There's a whole lot of things that I wish was different about our government. There's a whole, a whole lot of things that I wish was different about our country and the way we go about it. I truly get you. I see what you're feeling. I get it. But this is, what we're, this is what we're stuck with. This is where we're at in 2024. And the only clear choice for democracy is Joe Biden. Because you got to ask yourself, do you really think he's going to stand in the way of your democracy? Do you really think he's going to stack the Supreme Court to the right and you're going to see more rights stripped away from people? You can, you can allow Donald Trump to come back in, and when you do, you're going to have a president that bans people from coming into this country. You're going to have a president that starts deporting people. You're going to have a president that starts wiping away rights right and left. And it's only going to sting. It, the only way it's ever going to get through to his people is when it actually bites them in the ass. Once he doesn't need them anymore and can throw them under the bus, that's going to be pretty damn entertaining to watch. And there's going to be a whole lot of people looking at people like us and going, yeah, we should have been listening. Listen. I get it. I understand everybody right now, your emotions are running high. You got a lot of different feelings about a lot of different things, but don't take your eye off the ball. Go read Project 2025. It's out there to read. Read it and see what they have in mind. Read it and understand that their idea is to hand the reins of power over to one man, the next Republican president, be it Donald Trump or whoever. They want to hand it off to him and he makes every decision and no one else has a say. That's the gist of it. But get in there and read the nuts and bolts of it and read the language and read who it's directed at. Pay close attention to who they're talking to. They're talking to anyone who disagrees with them and steps out of line with them. They plan to rewrite history. They plan to create an America in the image of Donald J. Trump. That's basically it. But you don't have to take my word for it. It's there. Go read it. I don't know what else to say other than I don't want to see a repeat of 2016. I don't want to see people on my side of the aisle getting mad and staying home and thinking that somehow both sides are just as corrupt. They're not. We have one side that tried to overturn an election. They knew they lost. There was no evidence for voter fraud. We know that. that they got struck down time and time and time again, and they kept repeating that lie. And they tried their damnedest to stand in the way of the peaceful transfer of power. I have people say to me all the time, yeah, but they didn't succeed. That's not the point. The point is they tried, and the point is that was just their rehearsal. That was just the, them getting ready for the big dance. They're ready to vote, folks, because they think that one was stolen from them. So they're going to come at this one harder than ever. That's why we have to return the favor.